tonight's edition of Aussie Heroes, we follow the story of a newly graduated dentist who is ready to tackle the issues of remote and Indigenous healthcare. Our journey begins in Cairns, far north Queensland, where it's graduation day at JCU, and our young dentist is making plans for life after university. We asked Dr Park where he's heading his sights to. So I'm headed to Arrow. I've just finished a placement in a remote Indigenous community, and after seeing what's happening there, I feel like I've got to do something. Arakan is arguably one of the most disadvantaged communities in Australia. It's isolated and got a very young population, which means that's a great opportunity for preventive medicine. You've also probably heard about it in the news recently. With so many other problems going on there, with school closure and social problems, you can bet that people's oral health is a low priority. I'd like to change that. If I can make a difference in Arakan, then anyone can make a difference anywhere. And Dr. Park is full of bright ideas. See, I'm not like regular really I'm a cool dentist. To engage with the young population, we go and set up Pokemon tournaments to attract kids. Then I'll set them up with some oral health promotion before they can say thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did I just see the words Arakoon, Pikachu, and oral health promotion in the same sentence? Shit, what of it? Mate, they don't even have phones out there. How do you expect them to play Pokemon Go? What do you mean? Look, if you really want to change things, you really want to make a difference, you're going to have to do So, by connecting with the community which you wish to serve, you can build meaningful relationships whereby the community actually helps you build these strategies and services which in turn improve their health. Okay, so how do you exactly do that? Well, for our community, you'll need a community engagement strategy framework. Personally, I'd recommend the Queensland model by the Queensland Hospital and Health Service. So that's an 11 step framework which goes right from start to finish. Oh, okay. So that's a lot more to it than I thought. What's first? First, you need a goal. Alright, let's do it. And so, our young graduate sets off on an exciting adventure into the world of community engagement strategy planning. But will Dr Park's enthusiasm be enough to help Arakoon? The smart aim of the community engagement strategy is to gather information over one year needed to allow us to tailor the future services provided by a new dentist to the oral health needs of the Arakoon community. As outlined by the HHS framework, we need a strategy that will inform number one, service planning and design, number two, service delivery, number three, service monitoring and evaluation. Before planning any engagement strategy, we need to understand the Arakoon community profile. This includes understanding its geography, history, social structure, and the social determinants of health. Arakoon is northwest of the Cape York Peninsula. It's two and a half hours drive from Weeper and 11 hours from Cairns. There's extreme flooding for over half the year which cuts off access. It's considered ASGC category five, very remote. There are also 15 outstations around the community. The Wick and Wick Way people are the traditional owners and have been there for thousands of years. The Aboriginal children were never removed from Arakoon because it wasn't registered under the Industrial Schools and Reformities Act. According to the ABS, the population is 1,295, with 92% being Indigenous. As you can see from this population pyramid, there is a significant skew towards the younger population. This suggests a high birth rate. On the other hand, less than 17% of the Arakoon population was over 44 years of age, compared to over 37% of Queenslanders. 92%, the entire Indigenous population, speak an Indigenous language at home. There are also different clans, spiritual groups and language groups. English is still spoken and taught at the school but is a second or third language for many. Social determinants are important because if we do not engage beyond our environment, we won't have an impact on upstream policy making. Let's have a look at some that affect Arakoon. According to the ABS, the median income is $27,103, significantly lower than the Australian average. It's important to consider that this data also reflects the wages of healthcare workers in Arakoon, which would increase the mean income far above what most people in Arakoon earn. There are lots of potential sources of stress in the community. This includes high levels of chronic disease, suicide and sexual offences. Although there's no specific data on Arakoon, Indigenous babies are much more likely to be premature and low birth weight than non-Indigenous babies. 
This most likely ties into other social determinants like food, nutrition, addiction, and lower socioeconomic status. Social exclusion happens when people are pushed to the fringes of society and is linked with poverty and discrimination. Indigenous status is a marker for social exclusion in Australia. Within this group, women and LGBTQI persons in Arakoon may experience greater exclusion. Arakoon is one of four welfare reform communities, meaning the community has services to manage the finances of families. Most employees in Arakoon are labourers, and according to the ABS, the unemployment rate is 22.5%. This might not be a very accurate figure as census data collection is often very difficult in these communities. The council is a major employer in Arakoon with around 80 workers. Arakoon is likely to have good levels of social support given its smaller size. There are strong links to traditional culture in the community. Recent studies on household illicit drugs have shown that 27% of Indigenous Australians have used illicit drugs in the last 12 months compared to the Australian average of 15%. There is currently a complete alcohol ban in Arakoon. Worsening antisocial behaviour in Arakoon has resulted due to the secret entry of alcohol and drugs into the area. The Arakoon community relies on one general store for their groceries. The cost of materials and services, however, is quite high due to freight costs and distance from regional centres, and this is made worse in the wet season. Vehicle ownership is low and the high cost of petrol can make transport impossible due to the vast distances between outlying communities. Only one airline, Skytrans, flies to the area on selected days of the week. In emergencies, the Royal Flying Doctor service supplies transport to the Cairns Base Hospital for treatment. It's important to note that whilst the data we have gathered is from the ABS, one of the issues facing these communities is a lack of specific data for smaller community groups in these regions. Also, conventional methods of collecting census data are not as effective. So who could we get in touch with to help with our plan? Now, there are a few potential partners and stakeholders in Arakoon. These groups and people have a huge say in what goes on, and it's worth getting to know them if you want to make a measurable impact within the community. The truth of the matter is, they are the voice of the people. The Arakan Council are the main community body, so we'll want to collaborate closely with them. Noel Pearson, who has been in the news lately, is a prominent individual in the community. He is an Aboriginal Australian lawyer and land rights activist who works on promoting the economic and social development of Arakan and Cape York. The corporation Akapul Nagantan is another important group who aims to help families of Arakoon return to their traditional homelands. They have an interest in changing social and health problems in Arakoon, so we'll also need to work with them. The Families Responsibilities Commission are the body in Arakoon that make sure those on welfare are behaving responsibly in the community and are supportive of their families, neighbours and the general community. The Arakoon Primary Health Care Centre is where people in Arakoon go for their treatment, so we'll be working very closely with them. Other useful groups are the school teachers and principal, and the Royal Flying Doctor Service when considering outreach work. Before we plan any activities, we need to know what's currently happening so we don't double up. This can waste time, money, and also doesn't help the people of Arakoon. It's important people see a point to community engagement because nobody wants to answer the same questions over and over again. Current engagement activities in Arakoon include the local radio station, Black Star, which keeps the community up to date with news from the community and beyond. The Indigenous Knowledge Centre and the Women's Wick and Kugu Arts Centre provide a great initiative with which the greater community can be involved in a positive way. It provides artistic and commercial support for many of the local artists in the region. The Apanapima Cape York Health Council Community Controlled Aboriginal Health Organisation, responsible for delivering high quality, culturally appropriate, comprehensive primary health care to 11 Cape York communities, including Arakoon. In 2013, a whole community change program was rolled out, with Mayor Derek Walpo and his council intru introducing the program. This involved community engagement and ownership by primarily shifting the model from in institutionalised intervention to true community ownership. Though there is the Arakoon Shire Council meeting, third Tuesday of each month, open to the public. Back at JCU in Cairns, our young graduate is paid a surprise visit by a stranger 
This might be exactly who Dr. Park needs to help him plan his community engagement strategy. So I think I know a lot about Arakoon now. I think it's time to move on to the next stage. Planning. Whoa, 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 slow down, mate. How are you even expecting to plan this? You've never even been to Arakoon. Uh, who are you? Mate, I'm from Arakoon. I know all about the place. Wow, that's convenient. Well, come with me. Welcome to Arakoon, home of the Wick, Wick Wade and Kuku people. Now that we're here, we need to set some priorities for this plan of yours. I suggest basing them off current health service objectives from the Torres and Cape Health Service. These include care is person-centred, care is supported through partnerships, there is an engaged, valued and competent workforce, as well as a well-governed organisation. So I guess I should first get a better understanding of the oral health needs of the broader Arakoon community. I'll also make sure we develop an awareness of how oral health care can be made safe, accessible and equitable. To do this, partnerships with groups in Arakoon could be helpful. That way, we could determine the most effective means of improving oral health outcomes. We need to be realistic, however, and make sure we don't get ahead of ourselves in terms of what we can and want to achieve. Those sound like really good priorities to me, but what were your ideas for actually engaging with the community? Well, my previous Pokemon idea got shut down pretty quickly, so I'm not too sure. What do you recommend? The best strategies I've seen make use of all the levels of engagement. That's informing, consulting and collaborating. As you move along these, you get a deeper level of engagement. All three are important though. Hmm, I see. I've been having a bit of a think now and that now I know more about Arakoon, I think I've got some pretty good ideas. Let's use all the levels of engagement and some of the techniques outlined by the Queensland Government. We'll keep it at four solid strategies. First, you'll need a way of telling people about what you'll be doing in the community. That is, you need to raise awareness for the strategies you want to implement. Advertising will be a good way to do this, and will help with your service planning and design. It is a good way to get a clear message across, and you can reach a lot of people in their native language. Unfortunately, it could also be seen as propaganda. This can be pricey, as well as very much a one-way flow of information. For our purpose, however, should still be okay. I've got some great ideas for advertisements. We could put up culturally relevant posters around the town, at places like the Indigenous Knowledge Centre, supermarket and church. We could also do up some flyers to distribute at community events. I'm sure some of the council staff would be happy to hand a few out. There's also Black Star Radio, which we mentioned before. This would be a great way to announce our engagement at events and reach a lot of people at once. Even though most people in Arakoon might not have internet access, there is internet at the Indigenous Knowledge Centre, so we could ask the council to put some posts up on their Facebook page. Lastly, we should talk to all the key stakeholders we've mentioned and ask them to get the word out to the friends and families. In a community like Arakoon, word of mouth will probably be the best form of advertising. Great idea, but how are you going to consult with the community? And what about people living in the outstations outside of Arakoon? Could we maybe like interview these people? Yeah, that's a great thought. Conducting one-on-one -on -one interviews could be used to determine individual oral health experiences and needs, as well as how to address them. We can ask questions about the kind of services people would like to see and how to best deliver them. Interviews will be really good to get more information. I suggest you have a community member with you at all times, someone who can speak the native language. This could even just be one of the Aboriginal health workers from the community health service. By doing this, it will be more effective than getting people to do a written survey, as literacy may be low. You'll also get a really detailed understanding of how people see oral health. And because you go to the people, you'll hear from the people in outlying stations who may not come to the other engagement activities that we're going to run in Arakoon. Unfortunately, we won't be able to get all the community members because this is a very time-intensive approach. So we'll have to choose who we interview carefully to make sure we get a good representation of the community opinion. In terms of specific questions, we could ask things like, when did you last have a rusty tooth? Or when was the last time someone checked your teeth? Of course, we'd translate these questions to make sure they're culturally sensitive and we'd obtain consent beforehand. This sounds all good, but I think we need to come up with some way to like, the whole community to like, talk together about this issue. I've got an idea for that too. Another useful idea could be an open day at Arakoon Primary Healthcare Centre. 
This would be a great event for interested citizens to learn about the oral health needs of our community, whilst also giving them a platform to raise issues that matter to them. This will help us plan our services, deliver them, and even figure out how we evaluate them as well. It's a great day for the community to have some fun and has potential for sporting heroes to attract large crowds. Sport is a great way to engage people of all ages, and we've previously seen the success of Jonathan Thurston visiting Arakoon. Again, another great idea. But how do you plan on getting this day together, like, all by yourself? I don't. The great thing about having an open day at the Primary Health Care Centre is that we'll be able to get all the different health professionals involved. They can all use the opportunity to find out about the pressing issues for the community in their area. I do get a bit excited sometimes, but I know there's more to health than just oral health. A great idea. You might not get the whole community there because of access issues on the day, but you'll account for that somewhat with your one-on-one -on -one interviews. You will have to consider issues like men's and women's business, as people may not be able to discuss everything at an open day. You'll also need a backup plan if there's sorry business on the scheduled day. Now, those stakeholders you mentioned earlier, they know a lot about Arakoon. Who are you going to engage with? Well, an advisory committee is another initiative which can allow ongoing input and support in making sure plans for the community are executed and carried out. This provides an opportunity for key stakeholders to ensure that ideas are in the best interests of the community and the responsibilities can be mediated to a range of groups and agencies that have the specific and necessary skills. This allows for alternative strategies to build new links and partnerships. Some issues may be that not all participants may truly reflect the true expression of the wider community. It also may be difficult to manage the diversity of opinions. It's important to note that we would try to run this as an expanded Shire Council meeting. With so many of our stakeholders already present at these meetings, it would be inefficient to set up an entirely new committee. We should also see better attendance this way. On tonight's special of Aussie Heroes, the bright ideas of our young dental graduate for an Arakoon Community Engagement Strategy are starting to take shape. So much so that they catch the attention of the local council member who has some of their own wisdom to offer. I've just overheard all these great ideas, guys, but how are we going to make sure these activities go ahead as planned and achieve your goals? Here are a few things I'd suggest to check uh, or even the most. Number one, the most. Is the plan developed from the engagement appropriate for Arakoon? Was the engagement culturally sensitive? How many people showed up to, to the open day? And how many people did you interview? Most importantly, does the community think you are, your plans are realistic and achievable? These are the kinds of questions you should ask the community at the end, possibly at the advisory committee council meeting. Sounds great. We'll need to report our results to the community and advisory committee before we go ahead with any plans. We'll have a published version, but we can go back into the community and talk to people we interviewed and tell them what we found. It's important that the community see what we've learned, have our trust, and agree with our plans. Well, the only thing we've got left now is to get the ball rolling. That brings us to the last stage of the community engagement framework, review. I'll be in the community making sure to continuously monitor all of these strategies, making sure they're being implemented correctly, and then reviewing them afterwards. I'll also be responsible for getting feedback to all the participants and respecting their privacy and confidentiality. We'll ask the council to publish the results on their website. And hopefully we'll have a greater understanding of what kind of oral health services I can bring into Arakoon. We'll send the report to the HHS and with a bit of luck be able to get their backing for these services. And so, our young graduate, armed with his community engagement strategy plan, boldly sets off to make a difference in remote Indigenous oral health. He certainly couldn't do it alone, but it was his unwavering enthusiasm and passion which kindled the fire for change. Aussie heroes, they don't all wear capes. They're just like you, like me, like us.